no secret that animation is hard, with thousands of tutorials to choose from, an ungodly amount of learning, and to top it off, this. It's pretty obvious why animation is difficult. But what if it wasn't? Exactly one year ago, Blender announced a massive upgrade project called Animation 2025. They showed us how they're going to fundamentally change animation with one goal in mind, and that was to empower animators to keep animating for the next decade. Fast forward to today, and there is so much to talk about, like groundbreaking new features, quality of life changes, and a new animation system that's going to change the way we animate forever. So let's break these down one at a time. Creating an entirely new animation system isn't easy. And coming off a year of development, there's already been huge progress with a bunch of new features. And they call these the shinies. Everything I'm about to show you is available right now in Blender 4.0. Like for example, the graph editor is now a powerhouse. There's a whole new suite of tools available to us that let us do some really cool things with animation, like push and pulling keyframes, scaling by average, and even time offsetting your animation. All of this was actually implemented by the developer of an add-on called Animate. It's an amazing add-on with a bunch of cool stuff, but just having these tools in Blender's vanilla build, it's amazing. There's also two completely new smoothing functions. We've got the Gaussian filter and the Butterworth filter, but they're a little complex to explain. So I called in a professional to break this down. Yo. Yo, yeah, no, mate, how are ya? Um, can you explain the Butterworth filter? Oh, the Butterworth <laughs> filter. Um, yeah, I think sometimes while you're turning stuff down, you get a certain area that gets really loud. This filter like rolls off frequencies without boosting anything at the same time. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff. Mate, get smooth with the Butterworth filter. <laughs> Long story short, it smooths. All of this was basically impossible to do before, and now you can easily do it with just a few clicks. But it gets even better. Look at all these keys I'm working with right now. Not that many, right? Well, when you start working with keys like this, one of two things will happen. Either Blender will explode or you will. It becomes so frustrating to work on an animation when your system is running at like four frames a second. So with this latest update, the graph editor is literally 12 times faster. But probably my favorite update is what they've done with modifiers. Look at this. All of these are called F-curve modifiers, and they let you add a bunch of cool effects to your animation. I'm talking like stop motion, subtle movements, even looping full sections of your animation. Our only problem is, it's really annoying to do. To get these effects, you need to go to the individual layer, add the modifier, edit the details, and then repeat this for every single layer. But now you can literally do all of that with one click and edit every single layer at the same time. It's awesome. Now you might be saying, Smeef, there's no way it can get better than that. It, it can, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I paused like. Bones are like the number one thing that makes animation even possible. Without them, you can only really animate super simple objects. So it's kind of funny that bones are one of the most valuable assets for animation, while also being one of the most neglected. I'm pretty sure there hasn't been an update to bones in like four years. Previously, if you wanted to animate a character, you'd have to sift through potentially hundreds of controls, all while keeping a mental note of which control does what. It's a nightmare. So to fix that, you can use these layer functions, which basically show or hide pieces of your armature. That sounds great until you realize you can't name these. So not only do you have to sift through all these controls, you also have to sift through different layers to find what you need. Do you see the problem? This workflow sucks. <laughs> or I should say it did because we just got a massive update with bone collections. Essentially everything I just described has now been fixed and it's neatly tucked away into this bone collection system. You can easily name any bone layer now. Plus, bone colors 
are now way better. So every bone can have their own color like before, but now you can add them in edit mode and pose mode. It's also just way more readable in the animation workspaces. I mean, look at the difference here. <laughs> if that wasn't enough, on top of all this, there's even more updates like NLA improvements, new animation snapping options, and a massive upgrade to the pose library. This is amazing. But I want to talk about the huge announcement they made, which is literally going to change the way you and I animate forever. But all of this is kind of pointless if you don't really know how to animate. And going back to the start of this video, animation is hard. You have to learn Blender's user interface, how to interact with multiple different workspaces, how to edit when to imprints, watching That's a lot. And it can be super overwhelming if you're just starting with animation. That's why I want to show you something my friend Derek created recently. This guy is a freelance pro working on 3D animation for huge brands, which is why he just released five original classes on Skillshare. And this is my favorite one. It's called Advanced 3D Animation. It's one hour long and it's so good. Everything you need to know about animation, Derek walks you through it in such a short period of time. Plus, since it's on Skillshare, if you want to learn other stuff like Blender in general, or even some of my classes, you can, because Skillshare has hundreds of career-focused classes like photography and animation. It's awesome. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, by the way. <laughs> but honestly, if you're part of the 33% of people watching this right now, you can check out all of this for free because Skillshare has hooked me up with an amazing offer for you. The first 500 people to use the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. It's limited to 500 people, so first come, first served. But genuinely, clicking that link not only helps support the channel, but it lets me make these videos for you for free. Click that link and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. With the release of Blender 4.0, we already have so many amazing new features, like node tools and light linking. But Blender announced one of their biggest updates yet, and it kind of went under the radar. This is literally going to change how we animate forever. It's a complete reinvention of the animation system as we know it. This is massive. If I wanted to animate something now, it is stupidly complex. Stick with me here. You've got your main character, and once you start animating, your character gets strips. And these strips hold actions, and these actions hold your animation. That's fine until you realize strips live in an entirely different section of Blender called the Non-Linear Animation Editor. It's all over the place. And it gets worse because you're never really just animating your character. You're also animating the armature, the object, and materials, which by the way, also have their own actions. TLDR, this is like cooking for Gordon Ramsay, except you're on a Zoom call, there's no ingredients, and your house is on fire. Kill yourself! So what's the solution? One of the main goals with this new system is to speed up animators and make it simple. So what if instead of all that, there was a single animation block and it holds everything. No NLA editor, no actions, just one block and layers. This is what they're actively developing right now and the potential this opens up is insane. I don't think you quite understand. We can now have layered animation. So layer one could be your rough block out. Layer two could be your spline. And once you're happy with it, you can collapse the children layers underneath the main character layer. This is not only way cleaner, but it's gonna allow us to do things like create rules. So maybe you want the layers to happen in a certain order, like have the run cycle and then vomit. And since this is done with layers, this is gonna be huge for the layout stage because you can go backwards and forwards to different takes of animation. If you're having trouble breathing, don't worry. That's a common symptom of shock because this gets even better. We can have 
mix layers. So maybe you want to add in some rotation without touching the main animation layer. Well, all you'd need to do is add another layer above it, make some rotations, and set the type to mix combine or mix replace. This is going to be massive. And like me, you're probably saying, okay, but where, how do I animate? Like, where do I put the keys now? Well, that's kind of the beauty of it. Each layer is essentially an infinitely long strip and it holds all your keyframes. So you don't need to worry about actions or strips or anything. You can just solely focus on animation. Now, if you're like me, you're probably a little bit confused on what this would even look like or feel like. So they managed to make a super simple demo and you can see here just how powerful this is going to be once it is fully implemented. Now, let's be real here. This is all super early in development and potentially two years away. But seeing projects like this getting pushed and actually developed is so exciting. And I cannot wait to get my hands on this. So while we wait, there's one massive problem I see a lot of beginners make when starting in animation. And I break down exactly how to fix that in this video right here. 